All right, thanks for staying with us. This is the News Hub on Silverbird News Television and uh, Silverbird News 24. Thank you so much for staying with us on the program. The Ondo election is around the corner. Saturday is here. It's be October 10, 2020. All roads will be leading to all the nooks and crannies of the state where electorates come out. Uh, we hope a mass to uh, exercise their franchise by choosing the next governor of the state. Three gladiators, so to speak. Uh, for the APC, that's the incumbent governor, Kareem Durutu, my career will be there to vying. It's our jacket day slugging that uh, the umbrella of PDP on Saturday. While the Zeni Labour Party will have the deputy governor of the state, Abola Jai, uh, asking for people's votes to become the next governor of the state. There's so many things in the build up towards that, and that is, uh, those are the things we want to take a look at this morning on the program. Uh, so the Isondo Poll 2020 preparation, expectations, and chances uh, that the contestants uh, could you know, emerge winner uh, at the end of the day. Join us uh, via Zoom is Don O'John, the governorship candidate, Young Progressive Party, Ondo State. Good morning, uh, Don. Mr. Don, good morning. All right. Also, uh, we have Comrade Enefa Georgiou who will be joining us from our Port Harcourt Studios. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Enefa, good morning. Comrade Enefa. Yeah, we hope you, you yeah, join us in a bit. All right, so let's come back to you, Donald John. You are vying to become governor of Ondo State. How do you describe the preparation so far by your party and other contestants, so to speak, in the state? Oh, okay, um, permit me to speak about my uh, own political party. Because um, in, the, in the past um, um, uh, six months, uh, now we've been fully into uh, preparing for the uh, election. And you will agree with me uh, that New Progressive Party over the time has got the credibility of always being a political party that um, presents very credible candidates. In 2019, you will remember that uh, our candidate, uh, Professor uh, Kisley Mogalu, um, was one of the best that Nigeria could offer at that point in time. And that's exactly what the party has done in the case of Ondo State. We looked within uh, the fold of our political party and we discovered that, one, for us to present somebody that uh, would be able to um, walk shoulder high in that election, it must be one person that has not participated, participated in the rock that has been created in the system. Um, that's number one. Number two, you must have what we call street credibility. I started my career um, some 18 years ago in Bondo State, and um, I can tell you that uh, I actually know the nooks and crannies of the state. And that's, that's secondly. Then thirdly, we must also play out the issue of competence. From among all the political parties, I can actually say to you that uh, I am perhaps the only person who have... Um, who can actually flaunt the credential of understanding not just the political system, but um, the problem of leadership that we have in Ondo State and how we can solve it. And you will agree with me that if you solve the problem of leadership failure in any community, 90% of the problem of that same community has been solved. As we have in Ondo State today, we do not have a problem of resources in terms of natural or even financial. The major challenge we have that we've been battling with uh, most significantly in the last three, three years is the issue of leadership failure, where the concept of leadership is about power. Somebody wants to be the governor, the wife wants to be the deputy governor, um, the son wants to be the chief of staff and all that. But again, we are coming to change the narrative, change the direction of leadership from power to people. And that's what we've been marketing to the people. So the preparation of our party We've been able to uh, market ourselves so credibly, and we believe that the people will fight behind us for the election. Oh, all right, Donald John, we are looking at uh, preparations, expectations, and chances also, too. You know, so um, expectations are, are massive, but if you look at the history of uh, political history of Ondo from 1999 till date, you've had uh, the major parties oftentimes um, you know, holding the, the, the reins in the state. Uh, if you had the Alliance for Democracy, you would have the People's Democratic Party. Um, then now you have the, uh, you've had the Labour Party, and now you now have um, the All Progressives. 
uh, Congress. Your party is a new party, and I've heard people oftentimes say, with the newer parties, isn't it better that they work in coalitions if you are going to offset um, the status quo, that you stand better chances? You've mentioned Kingsley Morgan, but that was at national stage, and he's a well-known quantity. But at the state level, what, what would you say if, um, if, you, if your party was approached, for example, to work within a coalition? Would, would you stand a better chance than to run uh, on your own? I don't want us to model history here, and we need to be very careful. In 1999, in Ondo State, Ondo State is a very peculiar state, and we have to also look at our peculiarity and um, also understand what history is saying. History at this point in time has pointed us to one direction, that a new political party will win election come October 10, 2020, and this is very simple. In 1999, there were two major contenders. One of them won. The other, of course, lost the election. In 2003, this same person that lost the election came back to contest in that election and won the election. But in 2007, a new political party that didn't have any legislator, didn't have anybody at both the national or the state level, I'm talking about the Labour Party. The Labour Party came and won the election. Now, that is three dispensations that we talked about the political state. Now, in 2011, uh, two people contested the election, one lost to the other. And you remember that the one that lost now is now the governor of Kondo State. So if we are to follow the path of history, you will agree with me that a new political party is going to win the October 10, 2020 election. Kondo State is also very peculiar and different because it's not a state where everybody wants to run after the political parties. And I tell you that one of the things that one of the problems we have now is that even the media houses are trying to um, spread this notion that some political parties are actually superior to the other. My political party, if you start from the Senate, for example, you discover that there are three political parties yeah, in the one Senate. One moment, please, it's why Dr. John. Uh, it may be very order, wrong. It may be wrong of you to, to posit that media organizations are paying more attention to other uh, uh, political parties, you are on this station this morning. I will give you this platform. Uh, we can only give platform, platform to people no, no, that I'm, want to talk I'm, I'm, about I'm what they're doing. Station. And I'm so it's not in our place to give uh, more uh, prominence to people, other parties, let's say APC, PDP, over any other person. We're very glad that you, you, you decided to be on the program today, and that is what we stand for. We are for equity, and we give everyone uh, equal opportunity to see what they have to say. Okay. All right. I will be back with you in just a moment. Let's take it to uh, uh, Port Harcourt and River State, where Comrade Inefa Jojwell is standing by. Okay, Comrade, Saturday is around the corner. Before now, we were all very thankful that, oh, no problem in Odo State, no violence, we're not worried about issues. Election would go on peacefully. But before you know what is going on, we're beginning to experience and hear reports of violence, of people attacking one another. Do you think that we're going to have a smooth uh, on the way to uh, a very successful and peaceful, above all, free and fair election on Saturday? But taking into consideration the recent happenings have been recorded in the state. Uh, well, um it's obvious that um, the, our political gladiators or ruling elites have not learned from history. And uh, of course, uh, it has been our struggle, not um, governance. And as a result, uh, people seem to, in, the quest, in their quest for struggle for power, you know, want to do everything only possible uh, to undo the other. And like rightly said, we, we are all hopeful and we are all happy are uh, that uh, earlier before now, there was this uh, understanding, uh, there was this form of decorum, you know, especially uh, the speakers for the uh, the election, you know, where politicians, uh, to, to some large extent, uh, like behave uh, themselves. But I think the recent happening has shown uh, that our political uh, philosophy is still down, our political gladiators have still not learned. And of course, like we have always argued for us in University, specifically my organization, the University Society Organization, I have privileged to chair. 
that power in Nigeria or context in Nigeria is about uh, who grabs what, grabs power, and not necessarily about uh, governance. Uh, for, for instance, with respect to um, my colleague in the studio, I think I would have expected him to strike uh, certain uh, ideas around uh, around the, the, the uh, his political philosophy. Yeah, although yeah, it's good he's answering some questions you raised before him. But I, I think to that intermittently, I, I expect him to play out some surprises on his program, you know, along in, in, in trying to answer your questions. For instance, on issues of on housing, on, on issues of uh, alternative source of revenue. You know, of course, he has agreed with us that all those states uh, is not the state so much uh, um, natural resources. So we have expected that there would have been some new uh, economic program, you know, if I let me try to answer your question. And this is what that is lacking in our politics. And this is what is lacking in the current uh, electionary process in on those things. You, 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 you don't see Chinese. You don't see alternative ideas. You know, you don't see a, a clarity of purpose. You don't see... It, 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 even with the heat in the in, 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 in the U.S. debate, you still see surprises. You still see even in the, um, with the heated campaign, you still see a, a, a progress in terms of ideas on employment. You know, people, what people post about, what the, 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 the programs you know they boast about. You know, so, so that's so that's the problem. So we expect violence, and of course, mind you, if I put everything on 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 those things. I boost another party, and in that party you have a former governor too. So you, you get uh, you, it, that's automatically done by our own balance a, a serious, a strong, strong hold that a strong political party, if you like. Now you have the current governor uh, who is currently in the APC. Then you now have uh, the, the the thought in the PDP, which whether you like it or not, uh, from the experience, uh, uh, you know, they want to deploy resources in and outside the state, you know, sure. Uh, the, their candidate. So you, you have very serious debates going on. Of course, the last the last time uh, the PDP campaign was located, people were openly beating guns, were shot at all. That. So, by and large, we expect violent except our traditional rulers will step in. Because, like, what happened in the Dover, the upper of Dini stepped in. We expect that to happen. People expect civil society organization in all those states, and of course, uh, those, those national leaders are going to observe the elections in uh, all those states to step up their game, to set up the, the agenda, to push the agenda, all to right. bring Wait. the discourse back to the people. To say, okay, this is what we are going to, uh, to bring. Because what you bring discourse, if, if you want to chase a town out of an arena, all you need to do is to bring intelligent discourse. Once you bring it, pull out. So I think that uh, uh, the, the actors, the Right, right, Vince. I'm going to, I'm going to have to um, put you on the pause, please. Well, well said. A, a lot, a lot to say. I know you have, Vince, but we'll get back to you, uh, so we can ha we can also hear again from um, uh, Don or John, who is with the Young uh, Progressives Party. So, Don, um, so, some important point, Vince, uh, make there. The, the best opportunity for anybody who is. Um, going to vote in uh, Saturday's election in, uh, in Ondo State uh, will be to hear from the candidates. And the campaign rallies usually provide the best opportunity. But you know the way the COVID-19 pandemic has happened uh, has meant that um, many of those uh, open rallies uh, opportunities haven't happened the way they should. So we haven't had the chance to really hear uh, from the candidates what the real issues are. The debates provide a, a valid opportunity for us to know what every candidate has to offer. What are your thoughts in terms of um, the people versus the politicians in understanding what the real issues are on, ish, on, on platforms like um, debates when they happen? I understand the debate happened uh, over the weekend. Yeah, yeah I, I actually participated in, uh, in debates in the last one that um, was actually had. And, um, but there's usually a disconnect between the real voter and the person that listens or watches the debate, in the sense that, as we speak now in Nondo State, a community, a state of um, about four or five million people, we have just about 1.3 million people with voters card. And from that 1.3 million people, just a little above 40% have um, um, the probability of going out to vote. So there's a major disconnect. But what have we done differently on our own path? What we have done differently is that 
we saw the need for us during the COVID-19. We just felt that we're not just going to be traditional in our thinking. We could actually move a bit closer to the people. So, so what we did was to move from community to community, as many uh, people that we could engage with, to engage with voter directly. And we came up with perhaps about the only party that, that has a clear-cut agenda as to who. Oh, this is what we are going to do. And we even went beyond promises to set a KPI that within social period of time, these are the key performance uh, indicators that the people can actually use to measure us. So we came up with the LEAP agenda. The LEAP agenda in Yoruba uh, on the street it means where, where means we actually want to lift on those things from where it is now to where it's supposed to be. And on the end, each component of the LEAP agenda, we can quickly just talk about it. The end is what I've talked about so much, which is the issue of leadership. And I did a four-year research into the problem of leadership in Africa, and I came up with what the problem is. The problem is traditionalism. Traditionalism is a concept of leadership that actually places leader at a position of receiving from, from the people. For example, if I go to the traditional ruler of my community, he expects me to bring something. If the traditional ruler of my community comes to my house, he equally expects me to bring something. So traditionally in Africa, leadership is about receiving, not so much uh, about giving. And this is what an average politician has actually transported into political leadership. So you see somebody in power, what he's thinking about is, oh, what can I actually get from the entire governance process? And even in places where measures have been put in place to actually deny leaders from doing this, they still cut corners to actually get rich. So what we brought on board was, oh, our lead agenda is actually about leadership. We want to change this directive, this narrative from power to people. We want to put people at the center of leadership purpose. And other components, because we also understand the peculiarity of Kondo State, like I talked about, you know, those State education is a thing. And our own education policy is not just about going to school. Of course, it's part of it. It's about access and education and, and, and assignment. Access the sense that we do not want money to actually deny people from getting educated. And assignment in the sense that in the process of education too, should actually um, 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 allow people to discover their purpose in the process and follow through. So we were able to market our lead agenda to the people one-on-one. -on -one. So COVID-19 is not uh, a, to a total doom for our party because we were able to look beyond um, whatever the restrictions are. We were able to bring in our ingenuity and still engage with the people. So the debate platform uh, 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 might not have provided an opportunity for the real voter to actually interface with some of the candidates. But what we have done is to be able to create a community-based campaign system that gives us an opportunity to speak directly to the voters. And I tell you that it's going to spring a lot of surprises because in you know, those days today, there are about 400,000 people that have never voted, they've never participated in any election, and they have voters card. These are the people we actually targeted, reached out to, and the response has actually been wonderful. All right, thank you. Uh, we have to let you know that it's the build-up to the Undo election, and we intend to bring all the stakeholders from all the parties uh, to come talk about what they intend to do for the people of Undo State as uh, from Saturday once they get elected into the office. In the meantime, let's cross back to our Port Harcourt studios where we have a Comrade Nefa still standing by there. Comrade Nefa, so uh, all the ingredients that will make a good election uh, we hope that the political parties are there. We hope they have good manifestos that will change the lives of the citizens. We have the electorate themselves, who are the people that should be served at this point in time. The electoral umpire, very important, which is INEC. And then that's what we always will bring into the, re to the reason of the people, the fact that security has to be tight, put into consideration the latest reports of violence recorded in Ondo State. Let's take it one after the other. We have the, the governorship candidate of Young Progressive Party talking to us. We have others. Do you think, for, with all that you've been to have, you've had access to information uh, in manifestos, what do you make of the manifestos of the parties that you uh, have been able to come across for the people of Ondo State? I, I, I think um, party, party, party politics uh, is one of the biggest 
as um, internal, internal democracy in, 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 in the party, party politics, uh, even transparency generally in the party are very key. And of course, the program of the party, of course, as activists, we have always argued that most of our political parties are literally the same. Uh, in very recent time, uh, for me, I think the African Action Congress is showing some surprise, you know, in terms of program, you know, and they have been very clear on um, some of the things that they want to achieve. For instance, uh, the African Action Congress have a policy of saying that uh, every elected official uh, must not earn more than uh, is equivalent in, this, in, the, in the civil service. And that's very key. You know, that's very, it goes to show, if, if they can't implement it, they can do government, it goes to show some, some level of direction, you know, because part of our problem is not just that people are, are bad, but that the programs, you know, there is clearly no programs from political parties, you know, are different from what has been the order of the day. So we intend to see political parties, you know, coming up with such programs. So that is why I commend that particular uh, philosophy of uh, uh, the African action. I, 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 I think too, there are people who will do that. Uh, some, 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 of pro, some of programs have been very clear in terms of corruption. They have said that. But then they come into power as far as corruption is concerned. They are going to make sure everybody to book. It's a clear statement. You know, there is no middle ground. You know, it's not like uh, saying you fight corruption. Clearly, state it. But as we you came into office day one, you know, we understand too that you are doing that. Uh, I, I, I think that. Um, yeah, my, my colleague, the uh, Guba candidate, uh, the uh, young uh, party, uh, I think they have a program for young people, which is very, very key too. And that is not to say that um, why we are against gerontocracy, which is the government of people. It, it is not, our problem is not just about old people too. There are good old people and are equally extremely very bad young people. I am sure that I know a lot of young people, if you give them school posts, but they're even in government as I speak to you now. And they are very terrible, terrible results. So, so while I agree that there is a, there is a need for, for a shift which that political party has, uh, has uh, 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 tried to um, uh, uh, bring to the fore, uh, one must say that it is not just enough uh, to just say young people. Why do you need to say this? Not only enough to say young people, you know, and all that. But, but to be very fair to you, apart from uh, this, okay, another party again, the Socialist Party of Nigeria, the SPA. This thing too has only set up a clear socialist program. For them, uh, everything should be nationalized, should be state owned. Clearly, that's their program. Their program is that everybody that is that the major means of production of uh, the economy should be controlled by the state on behalf of the people. That is their clear That's another party too, and uh, strike some because that's our problem. Whether you agree with them or not, one of the major problems that our parties are having is ideological clarity. In other words, I just specifically mention uh, the socialist factor of Nigeria, but the control of purely state socialism, you know, and that is their program. But if you agree on them on the basis of that program, all you right, are going all right, to have Thank you very much. African Action Congress, who have only made very clear cut uh, points, clearly, right. and of course, know who they are. Thank you very much, And of course, your progress will which I feel that, uh, apart from saying uh, that uh, young people take over power, yeah, which is a good program, like I said. But All right. Thank you very much. I mean, Vince will go on and on and on, but um, we understand the passion. It's the countdown to the Undo governorship poll. Uh, let's cross over to Don or John. Thank you very much also to Don or John is the governorship candidate for the Young Progressives Party. Thank you very much, Don. All right, uh, take a quick break. Uh, we come back, uh, we'll have some discussions around World Teachers Day, which is today. Please stay with us. <laughs>